I also feel dead. I slept last night better than I have slept in so long, and it was so good. And then my alarm went off, and I was like, you got to go to Thumbs. <laughs> and like, oh. No. We'll get into it. No. Guys. Get into that pod spirit. Eat this bottle pop. It's... Have you read the latest Idle Thumbs podcast description? October 27th, 2016. This is Idle Thumbs 286. I am Chris Remo. I'm Nick Brecken. I'm Jake Rodkin, and I can't believe you didn't introduce this as Idle Thumbs 286. What a... Why you specifically said 286. I <laughs> always say that, and you always tell me No, no, no. Not this, this time it's a computer. Oh, I see. The, uh, I see. The Idle, the Idle Thumbs, Thumbs 286. 286. This time it's a computer. <laughs> Nick's eating the bottle pop. Oh my god, Nick's eating oh, the baby oh, bottle pop. Oh no. Oh. Oh, it's wow. all I just saw you oh. had like a gag reflex as soon as that started to enter your mouth. Nick, you're Man, supposed to you're it. supposed to lick I the nipple, then dip it in the powder, then oh. lick it again. Oh. Where is the powder? I don't even see any powder. <laughs> you got to unscrew the bottle oh, pop. You gotta, oh, it's not something that just comes Oh, you out. were just licking plastic. Oh, yeah. no, 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 that's no, a no, candy. No, it's not plastic. It's candy. Oh. Or something. Oh, oh! This this is how you. Yeah. So first you. Get oh, the I thought n- it was a tube. Oh. No, you. Nick, you got to get the nipple wet, then put it in the. There you go. <laughs> there you go. This is like a lascivious this candy so, for an adult to eat. Okay, now eat it. <laughs> oh my god! I don't like it. <laughs> anyway, thanks to everyone uh, who's watching this, this on our first ever looks like- on our first ever live streamed <laughs> episode. That was a great way to start that off. <laughs> Just kidding. O- only Chris and I know what that looked like. So oh. that look that made it look like someone was like forcing you to eat your vegetables, <laughs> yeah. but in like a BDSM dungeon or something. Right. Like there was that the like <laughs> signal, the like mixed signals being sent by the full like image of that was bad. I yeah. didn't like it. Well, I didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well. Welcome. Anyway, on that note. <laughs> um, it woke you up, though. Uh, sure. Yeah, I hey. definitely woke up. <laughs> thanks to that. Um, so I think on this episode, we're going to be talking about Civilization VI, because Nick and I both played it. Mm-hmm. Um, Nick, you also played Sim Ant. I did play I think. Sim Ant. I saw on Twitter yeah. that you played Sim Ant, so I don't know what also, the deal also, with that is. Also, we should probably talk, talk for a second at, about the Nintendo Switch. Oh, right. A whole crazy thing happened a week ago, and it already feels like forever ago. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so let's let's start with that. Information moves so fast these days. I mean, it does though, actually. Yeah, no, it is weird. Like that, like everyone already had a million takes on that thing, so now it feels, you know, like the amount of time it would have taken for that many takes to be digested. Like every console cycles are <laughs> humans are consuming takes at a record speed. <laughs> right. I just, you takes know, are I just, exponential. Like <laughs> consoles are not released very frequently, and so every time a new Console. I mean, this isn't like well, a full part- console cycle, but every time a new console comes out, it's like in that intervening time, the the whole internet has changed. Usually, <laughs> right? Like, I mean, yes, or at it's, least parts it's true. of it. We don't. I don't. We don't need to get too too far into the old Sorry, switch okay. yet. Okay. But there's really just that one video, which is probably also there's not a whole lot to, well, to so on I guess which there's a, there's a pretty flimsy foundation on which to found formative takes like formable no, real but even i mean i guess even to the point i was just making i guess i'm like also operating the way the rest of the internet does because my initial reaction when i saw that thing was like really positive and then increasingly since then i've really come down from it and now i kind of don't care well anymore. let's talk about civilization six and then we'll get back to that switch because I, I what i really want to hear about is civilization six because okay. i was sick on a couch instead of playing it mm-hmm. your civilization sick on a couch um, Nick, you were... Uh, Nintendo Switch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious to hear your reaction to this because you have probably played as much or more Civ as I. Probably true. And I think you're probably... I think I, one of the things that occurs to me every time I play a new Civ game is that I have the kind of brain that is really bad at distinguishing between... Like, I will totally... The various versions yeah, of Yeah, I will yeah. totally... I mean, like, I can remember what they all look like and how they basically all play in like broadly but when it comes down to specific things i'm like god when do they introduce trade routes like man Mm. has religion always worked like this and also i can like it's very easy for me to unintentionally like retcon shit into past versions of civ right um so i never feel like i know it's so hard for me to declare in retrospect which ones are better or worse other than sort of just knowing like oh right civ 4 is the best one like i remember that being true yeah um 
So I would be curious to hear from you how you think, the, what is the initial impression this game is making on you? Um, I really like this game, yeah, I mean, but I'm, I'm, so I'm a little suspicious of certain aspects of it, but I haven't played enough of it to really prove out whether those things are actually good or bad. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, there's the, there's the first layer of it, which I, like, all of the changes, this game to me feels like, in terms of comparing to other games in the series, it feels very much like an evolution of five in a way that I didn't really expect, because I think, like, a lot of the early coverage of this game was... Oh man, Civ Six is is crazy. It's very different and and you know wildly uh, you, you know uh, evolving the Civ formula. But but really, when you load this game up, it kind of looks like Civ Five in a lot of ways yeah. and feels like Civ Five, which is not a bad. Well, that's thing. funny because what I had heard about Civ Six was not that it was evolving and it was going crazy. Like the the only coverage that I read of it was imagine Civ Five with all the expansion packs, and that's the starting point out of the gate. Oh well. Anyway, imagine Civ Five <laughs> with all the expansion packs, yeah. and that's that. I mean, I mean, that is but, how it feels, except with all the city stuff, which feels the city stuff different is very me. different, and it's really I I like it a lot. Yeah. So I, what so what they did in Civ Six yeah. is they, and I think I agree, I like it a lot too. Although I, there's like a weird side effect of it for me that I'll talk about in a sec. But they with Civ Six, what they did is instead of cities being um, just single squares or hexes surrounded by um, like uh, sort of cultural territory that you control and can then work for additional resources. Um, now you can actually like intentionally build out your city um, with a lot more um, choice and structure onto those tiles by building different kinds of districts that are like commercial districts, entertainment districts, or, you know, holy sites or whatever. Um, and so you your city... F- actually becomes more of like an increasingly sprawling urban center. Man, the thing that I wanted as a kid when playing Civilization 1 is literally this. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, it scratches it's the itch of something like it's like a high level version of something like Dawn of Discovery or like an Anno game, you know what I mean? It's like it's like the super macro version of right. that where like it feels like just enough of being able to make your city feel somewhat unique compared to the rest of the map and then not enough to where you're actually like you know doing an actual city building right thing. you don't you don't really micromanage and like that yeah. is actually something that is leading to a a weird dynamic for me in this game like I played through an entire an entire game of Civ six like start to end with and like I realized I, I realized this like two thirds of the way through I realized this in like you know sixteen fifty uh I didn't really understand very much about how the game worked <laughs> um, but like at this point Civ games have gotten so slick and playable. Mm. That if you don't understand how something works, like no, it's not really going to prevent you from progressing. Right. Whereas, certainly the original Civ through, I would say like Civ Four, if you don't understand what's going on, like you kind of have to figure it out because the, the those games don't like the UI isn't really smoothing everything over for you. Like they're pretty complicated. Well, also they added things in Civ Five, like um, I guess just in general, like city defenses became a big thing uh, mm-hmm. where it's much harder for you to just instantly get right. completely destroyed also, by barbarians. So, like, as I recall, this is this was new to Civ Five. You can't like go to the next turn without doing everything. So the game, mm-hmm. like everything that needs to be done. So like if you have a unit that hasn't doesn't yeah. have an order yet, even if the order is just skip your turn, or if you have a city that hasn't doesn't have like a new um, production item queued up. You have to do that before you go to the next turn, which is really good in a lot of ways, but also means it forces you to just like click through stuff. And if you don't know why you're doing those things, like you don't learn. I'm not really criticizing the game per se. So what did you do? I just kind of played the game and then suddenly I just lost. It was really weird. Like, I just played the game for, like, days. I mean, you know, for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. And I was just basically, like, puttering along. And like, boop, boop, I'm, yeah. you know, France, and I'm I'm making my cities. And I was I founded the Shinto religion, which I spread, like, all over the world. I was definitely the world's dominant religion, although I guess not dominant, qu- not quite dominant enough to, uh, to win an early religion victory. Um, and... And I was just playing and playing and playing, and then like literally, su- like zero warning, like zero anything, it just slams into this cutscene of just like my city, my city's in ruin and like post-apocalyptic world, and it's like you've come far, but your civilization has crumbled into dust. <laughs> I'm like what the fuck? Like I'm literally like one. I mean, that's second just life, right, Chris? <laughs> that's <laughs> just that's civilization, right? Like what? You I founded mean, a major religion, set, rested on your laurels for thousands of years, and then uh, you lost. There could have been a little like, <laughs> like 
Trump great leader who like waltzed mm. into my city and presaged this right. or something. Like I don't know. It was literally like there was no decline. Yeah. Like there wasn't like the rise and fall of the Roman Empire. It was sure. just like it was sorry. Just, like, you're the second best civilization, but someone hit a win condition at the end. It yeah. literally didn't even tell me that. Like I actually couldn't. That, that it sounds just, like it's what happened. I I <laughs> assume that's what happened, but the screen didn't say like. You, uh, like someone else, somebody else went to space or somebody, this, yeah. or like someone else. You know, I I eventually found out. Oh right, there's a turn limit, and the game will just end at that turn um, limit, which is I think is like silly. And I must have in the past just always turned that off. Because is there I, not an option to just keep playing? You, there is. Okay, but I but I was so confused. I was like so put off and baffled that I just uh, ended the game and actually started the just straight up tutorial. Okay. That just like literally just like psh, guide me turn by turn. Because I want to make sure I'm not just missing major things, even though mm-hmm. I've played a bajillion hours of Civ in my life. Uh, but it was really like confusing and off-putting, <laughs> and I, I really, I, I don't know if I necessarily have like a great solution for that. If the game just has a turn limit, I guess my solution is just going to be turn off the turn, turn off the turn limit because you can change any of those factors in Civ, mm-hmm. which is good. But yeah, that was a really weird and like strange experience. Hmm. Yeah, That's, that is strange. Yeah, I've been just doing the thing that I do with all Civ games, which is I. It's almost like a running algorithm where I just I start as one uh, civilization. I play like twenty turns, restart, try a different difficulty setting, <laughs> play as that right. civilization, a different civilization for like fifty turns. I, I basically just like started and restarted and restarted and restarted. I don't know, maybe ten times at this point. Wow. So like cumulatively, I think I have played like probably twenty, thirty hours of this game. But I think I've only gotten to about nineteen hundred at most. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think at that point, I just I, well, I the just game kind of... fucking ends at like two thousand. Well, that's good. Yeah, so. I'm glad I just stopped <laughs> there. Why bother living out the twentieth century? That's, or twenty fifty you know, or something. Yeah. Um, at, what, at what point do you think you're going to be ready for a, for a full game? <laughs> maybe, maybe Nick is basically a neural network, <laughs> uh, a learning computer. Oh yes, yeah. Um, I don't know. The I'm I'm just sort of enjoying looking at all of the different uh, components and, and things that they've added like the um I spent like just an hour playing around with that stupid uh thing that they added that looks like more like a board game you know the there's a view, oh, the strategic view the they strategic added that in view. Civ 5 yeah did they really yeah, uh-huh. is that is that was that in Civ 5 mm-hmm. oh man did i just never notice that that was in the game mm-hmm. Oof, weird well, anyway you can play a lot of Civ without actually understanding yeah, how it's like how a fully works. flat 2d mode where you the whole you that right that's what you're talking about mm-hmm. where your whole game the whole game world looks like a flat map oh man yeah. okay well anyway well anyway what are you gonna say about it though oh no I just I love it oh and it, it just in general like I don't know maybe this is just all Civ 5 stuff that I've again have forgotten that was it's 3d now <laughs> <laughs> um I mean the, 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 the difference squares is that I, have six sides <laughs> Um, I, I don't know. You, you can tell that there are some some stark differences in terms of the way that this game plays, though. Like, especially the way that they've um, allowed you to do things like linking units now, or you can actually oh, yeah, that's like, really escort. Cool. Um, like for instance, like a settler that would normally just get completely owned by any random mm-hmm. enemy that's walking across the screen, but now you can link it up with uh, a combat unit and sort of walk it across yep. the map. Just little stuff like that that makes a big difference. Mm-hmm. In like even just I don't know. I was really skeptical that forcing people to use workers manually was actually going to be enjoyable. Like when I saw that change, uh, I I was baffled. I, I could not believe that you couldn't automate workers because that's just like a thing that's been in Civ forever. You mean like, builders? Bu- builders. Well, they okay. used to be called workers, but now they're called builders. Okay, because workers um, are now what they, I think they call the population uh, or something. Sure. Yeah. Um, but uh, not being able to automate those guys, I was just like, oh my God, this is going to be the most tedious thing in the world. Right. But I think they've made it into a really better, interesting. Actually. It's it's way better. And, and just making it an actual like str- you know strategic choice. Because now to, they only have three uses each. That's the other thing that's really smart about that. If yeah. it was if it was still an infinite use thing, then it would have been pointless. But the fact that it's um, well, something you have to choose to build, you have to invest in yeah. by like building the war- builder for eight turns. And then once you built that builder... Then and you the, get three uses, and it's it's very and also because of choice. districts, like because of districts and other kinds of new tile improvements that didn't exist before. Like there's actually a there's reasons not to necessarily build up an area, yeah, because you'll get wiped out anyway if you build a district on top of it. Like I got in the late game, I built a naturalist yesterday, which like is a crazy late game one use builder that creates a national park, mm. which requires like a four hex area which is a huge amount of real estate yeah Yeah. in a civ city um and it just designates that area 
as a national park zone. It can only be built on tiles that have a like an appeal of charming or higher. <laughs> uh, so like mountains are often breathtaking mm. type tile. Uh, and it was really hard. Like there was only one area in my entire empire that actually was like four unimproved tiles of sufficient charm. Um, that this did that you this, build it? I did build it. Were you really it, proud of it once you did it? Uh, I mean, I, I guess it I mean, brought it more tourism to my civilization. So. Majestic as fuck, probably. It was only charming. <laughs> all of my Yelp review of, all of, the, my, of the Grand Tetons. Yeah. It was only somewhat <laughs> charming. Merely charming. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I had a bunch of breathtaking mountains and shit, but they were all. All of them had just like one improvement adjacent that kept it from being, mm. yeah, a, a, an appropriate site. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I, I don't know. I, th- I think I probably even need to play more of, of oh, this I d- game. Oh, I definitely do. I need to start to... over and be more serious about it. Yeah. Mer- Merely Charming is a decent detective name also. <laughs> Merely Charming. <laughs> yes. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. Talk about, you could continue to talk about Civ. All I want is to just keep pressuring you guys to keep talking about civilization. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have tons more to say yeah. at this point. I'll be done soon. But I, I, every time a new Civ game comes out, I sort of reckon with my relationship to it or like not my relationship to it but more sort of the mode in which I play it which yeah, I'm sure too. is very different than yours um, because I basically like it's funny you brought up Anno because I basically play Civ games like an Anno game right. which is basically just like as a little clockwork world that I tinker around with I basically play Civ games for the reason some someone would play like Victoria like a grand strategy mm. game from Paradox or like Hearts of Iron or something but I'm like too dumb to play those games so I just play <laughs> Civ which is right. a lot easier to play but like the point of Civ is really actually to like totally dominate other civilizations and like the the victory conditions for Civ are incredibly black and white it's like yeah. achieve this technology period like just get there first or like destroy everyone or like wipe out everyone else's religion so mm-hmm. that yours is the old, the dominant one like they're all these like vi- but i just don't like i just love just going in there and like tinkering around with my shit and just like maintaining my little empire and doing and like i was playing through the tutorial yesterday and the the win condition for the tutorial is um Ultimately, it's revealed. It's like, okay, it's just a basic domination victory, and there's just one other civilization in the game, and you just, once you kill its capital, once you capture its capital city, like, you've achieved a domination victory because you've captured the capitals of all the other civilizations, which in this case is just one, and then you win the tutorial. And I, like, I couldn't do it. Like, I was playing it last night, and I was going through the tutorial, and I, I finally, like, I never, I, I never declare war in Civ, ever. Yeah. Like, I never do it. If someone attacks me, fine. Like, obviously, I'll defend myself. But it's just, I'm, I'm, I always want to <laughs> do all the, like, culture stuff and religion stuff and build wonders and all that, all that stuff. And, uh, and so eventually, I'm like, okay, I got to just finish this tutorial. Because the tutorial has no save game in it, and it's, like, mm. kind of a long tutorial. And... And Sarah came into the office and she's like, hey, let's go to bed. And I already knew I had to wake up early to come in and do this podcast. So I'm like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I just got to like kill this one thing. Um, and <laughs> so I'm playing a video game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was it was it was stupid. Uh, and so I had, you know, I just built a bunch of chariots, which were these which, this particular kind of chariot, which is a, a unique unit that Egypt gets, which is who I was playing in the tutorial. And I go and I start like laying waste to the uh, the um, capital city of, of Gilgamesh. Mm. And uh, and Gilgamesh is like, oh, I can't believe this. Like, I hate you. Yeah. And I'm like, oh no, I'm sorry, <laughs> Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh talks. And uh, <laughs> and um, and I I'm sitting there like I have at this you know eventually I have basically you know units is completely surrounding the capital city, attacking it every single turn, mm-hmm. and I've just beat the shit out of this city, and I'm attacking it for. Ever and it's just going on and on. I'm like, why the fuck am I not like? Why am I not capturing? Like, why am I not moving into the city and taking it? Like, what the hell is going on? You know, and uh, and Gilgamesh is like, like, please, like, I will offer peace. And he's like trying to throw gold at me, and I'm like, I oh, can't, I can't do it, Gilgamesh. I'm sorry, like, I gotta refuse. And he's like, how dare you? And I'm like, oh no. And I'm feeling like legitimately bad. Mm. Like I'm actually feeling bad about this because I'm just sitting here for like, like poor dozens Gilgamesh. of turns. Yeah, just like just wasting this guy's city forever. And I'm like, why the fuck won't it just die already? Kill so me, I can, like, says Gilgamesh. Put this out of, like, <laughs> all of us get a put, a put out of our fucking misery. And he keeps coming back with more peace 
offers and he's like throwing gold and technology <laughs> and like offering me like his right. other city and I'm just like I can't Gilgamesh I can't I'm so I can't do it it's like, I, oh no the worst and, yeah it's this terrible just, and just I'm just like created what this the quag- fu- endless yeah, quagmire like, what the yeah, fuck is going objective on objective to torture Gilgamesh it, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and eventually I find out that like I you I I think what is happening is that these unique uh, chariot units for Egypt are ranged units, and you can't capture a city with a ranged no, unit you can't, because yeah. they won't march into it. But like, I don't ever dominate in Sibs, so I don't know this <laughs> shit. And so, and so I'm like, fuck. And so now I'm trying to go back to my cities to build just like a no- like one build one spearman, like infantry like one guy, guy. Yeah, yeah. Except because I've been waging war for so fucking long and not doing anything else, my I have zero gold left, and my my income is <laughs> oh, negative. take some of Gilgamesh's so, gold the next time he I, offers it, and then use it to build one no, soldier but, to destroy when, him. No, just, but to do that. You have not to make peace, and then the, the game like, uh. like enforces your peace treaty for thirty turns or whatever it is, however long. And so, and so I'm like, fuck. So, and then Sarah's like, you gonna come to bed? It's been like <laughs> half an hour at this point, right? right? And I'm just like, no, I'll be there. I'll be there in a second. I gotta kill Gilgamesh. And 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 it's it <laughs> never Gilgamesh ha- is just like, can't go to bed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it never fucking happens. I never do it. Like the fucking tutorial, which is designed God, so that what anyone a horrible future you've, can, you've can yeah. do it. Gilgamesh is still I, alive to this day. <laughs> right. Yeah, in his burning city. I was like, oh, well, maybe now in Civ Six because they have these new God. like city districts. Maybe you have to like individually pillage mm. every city district. So I go around and I set fire to Ed, get some gold to like his that, university you know? and his churches <laughs> and fucking everything. So just th- there's so much more city now to be in perpetual flame, you know. So like, yeah. just I I just I, I'm just occupied and I. Meanwhile, he's like slowly picking off some of my units. I don't even have as many chariots left because I really thought like I'm just going to roll in any second now. Like I don't care about sustaining my army. What a disaster. What a catastrophe. Like that guy's (laughs) fucked forever. I didn't finish the tutorial. I still got to bed late. Ugh. It seems like it taught you a lot, though, Chris. (laughs) It seems like I definitely learned like you're prepared to be a a world leader at this point. Yeah. (laughs) If you've. Enshrined, encircled the city for the hundreds of years, and uh, God, you don't you don't seem to feel that was. bad about it. So I think you're I think I, I think you've been really fully trained. Oh, okay, well, I felt so, I felt well, that's so fine. bad about that's fine. it. I felt so that bad for you, him. That makes you a better yeah. a better leader. Then that's, that's good. God, it probably ro- was actually centuries. That's the funny thing about the oh, time yeah. scale of the Civ. Yeah, mm-hmm. like I, that. This is that is just like a thing now that if you grow up in 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 that city, I can't remember the name of the city, but. Uh, spent hundreds, spent centuries sieging it, and never even bothered right. to learn. The it was just on fire the whole time. But uh, that's like kids born there. That's that's just like the, when they go to school and they're just like, in this country, we're on fire and mm-hmm. we're at war and we produce nothing. And we pr- <laughs> we produce <laughs> one war cart every like twenty years, which we send out of the city to attack these people, and it's destroyed. Oh my God. And if you would like to, volunteer- can I be the war cart? <laughs> yeah. No, if you, tr- this if you try really great, hard, great you, you might become the war cart, and, and you'll get to die. This for basket your- here by the gate contains the gold that we offer them every ten years, then they reject. <laughs> <laughs> Our immortal leader, Gilgamesh, <laughs> drags this basket of gold out. <laughs> you talking about Gilgamesh sitting in his burning city reminded me of a discovery that you guys have probably both learned. But uh, when I learned it a couple years ago, it made me very mad, which is the CD-ROM burning utility. Nero burning oh, ROM. Oh, Nero burning, burning ROM. Yeah. It's yeah. just Nero actually burning Rome. It's, yeah. yes, Nero burning Rome. Yeah. Man, that I didn't know that until like a year ago. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh man, that in in terms of like I remember when I when I really like, there's it, it there's a few of those I, of yeah. those like just little stupid things that are in your brain and you don't ever think of them. And the other yeah. one is uh, Phoenix Down in Final Fantasy that it's a feather because it's just a down feather from a phoenix. That I've I figured okay, out. That I didn't. Ago. That's, ah, that's, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I knew Nero Burning here. Rome instantly, but the Phoenix Down. I Wait, just, really? I instantly? Just, yeah, yeah. When you were like twelve or whenever yeah. the fuck you first used Nero Burning Rome, fuck off. I did. <laughs> no, I did. But Phoenix Down is embarrassing uh, on a whole other level now because that's <laughs> it's, it's very. Mm, hmm. Your All brain right. puts the emphasis in the wrong place on that one because it's not yeah. the way that anyone would say that in English, but it makes sense when you think about it. Yeah. yeah. Gross. Whereas Nero Burning Rom is just garbage. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's such a weird uh, yes. title that I, yeah. I think it made it forced me to think. I mean, about I it respect. More I I respect the ingenuity of the person. Well, it's actually not even Nero Burning Rom. It's Nero the Burning Rom. Is it? I don't. Yeah, think that's true. I don't think that's true. What? I think it is Nero Burning Rom. Really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. 
Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, Nero Burning Rom. Oh, then I think I had a misconception of of what the actual name of Nero Burning Rom was for like 15 years that completely blocked me from actually interpreting it correctly because I always thought it was Nero the Burning Rom, <laughs> which just I just figured it was so nonsensical that there was just nothing to figure out other than like I thought it was maybe just named by someone who like didn't have English as a second language or something. That's probably and, also true. But they didn't put a the in there. You did that. Why did I think that? I've always thought that. We all realized Because you were thinking of Nero and the burning of Rome. (laughs) That's true. Oh, you know what? This company uh, that makes this Nero AG is a German company. And (laughs) Rome in German is spelled Rom. So wait, really? Yeah, there you go. Okay, here's the thing: if you search for Nero the burning Rom, there's a shitload of results. If you search for that in quotes, a lot of wrong people. Well, I must have just found it from a from a a weirdly named thing. (laughs) Yep. When did Nero Burning Rom come out? I don't know. <laughs> I found it on File Planet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or something. Yeah. yeah. CNET. If, if anyone, probably a lot of people listening don't know what this is, Nero Burning Rom was software that was released first apparently in 1997, uh, which was you would just used it to like burn. To CD, burn CD to burn ROMs. Rome. Yeah. <laughs> to burn Rome, to, to burn, burn CD ROMs. Yep. <laughs> yep. It was, and the logo yeah. is the Colosseum on fire. Yeah, let's just... So, <laughs> that wasn't the original. There's no way that was the original it was, logo. It was. No, it was I wasn't. think it was even in the system tray Fuck as, as no, a little burning. Wasn't. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Okay. I remember that system tray icon. I remember no. when I brought this conversation up, yeah. and I now think <laughs> you it's... Regret, you you I, regret I, your choice. I also now end it. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> anyway, that's Gilgamesh. Yeah. He's a CD-ROM utility. Gilgamesh burning Uruk. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. Uruk was the name of the city. I remembered it, by the way. Uh, we figured that out while you said that very confidently. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that was my so that was my my depressing civ experience. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. I'll play more of it. We should stream that game. I was just thinking that yeah. a minute ago. Yeah, it'd be fun. Yeah, we could do a multiplayer stream. Even that might be interesting. Like against each other, or what do you mean? Well, I, you know, only if you choose to be against me, Chris. <laughs> no, what I mean, like, yeah. Well, theoretically, I'm just saying. We, yeah, you know, I we, always we... forget that Civ has multiplayer. I, yeah, it's, that would be hard to do well because you'd have to have I suppose two. So. You'd have to have a split screen stream or something, and the half of the half of it wouldn't be doing like. Yeah. There's a lot of waiting. I suppose. In multiplayer, Civ. I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. I think the I think the uh, the two people in the same place is is a good. It's a good stream format. I have a feeling it might, yeah, it might be, it might be interesting. <laughs> and by interesting, I mean a disaster to to, to have our two play styles coexisting on a single, <laughs> single. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like right, I think, right, yeah, right. No, that seems yeah. good. Yeah. I mean, what would end up happening if we were cooperating is just that you would be doing everything and you would just have some more resources. <laughs> and meanwhile, you're like, <laughs> which is basically what it was when we played like StarCraft together. That's true. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, it depended on the the game, but like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a I have a turtling mentality certainly mm. um all right well a uh, one civilization note uh people who enjoy podcasts on the internet mm. should listen mm. to this week's or this month's episode ah. of the designer notes podcast which is a game developer interview podcast hosted on idle thumbs uh this month's designer notes is soren johnson interviewing sid meyer soren was the lead designer of civilization four and sid meyer is sid meyer mm-hmm. uh and if you're the designer of Civ One, the designer of Civ One, and like owner of Firaxis. Yep. So if you, well, if, no longer I guess owner, but he runs it. Whatever the boss. Yeah. He's Firaxis's boss. He is big uh, old boss. So if you have Civ on the mind and want more Civ stuff, listen to two of the designers of the good Civilization games. I mean, yep. there's a lot of good Civilization games, but Civ One and those Four are, are pretty I mean, the, the, the seminal. Those are Civs. my favorites, probably yeah. totally in total, just because I Civ One was such a groundbreaking game and was uh, the first one I played and God may still to date be the one I played the most it's hard to know mm-hmm. yeah you can listen to that by just looking in your podcast app or whatever for designer notes or going to idlethumbs.net slash designer notes and it's right there cool what do you think of the music in Civ 6 Chris? oh man that because, reminds me well I think I know what you're gonna say anyway you 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 talk oh really yeah yeah, yeah. go go I will uh, well maybe not and the maybe I'll surprise thing you the thing I think of the music 
is that there's one track in it that lasts for centuries that sounds like the fucking Muppet Show. <laughs> okay, that's not what I thought you were okay, going to say. Okay, I thought, I thought maybe it was. <laughs> what? Well, well here's like the a, thing. There's <laughs> like a, there, yeah, there's a thing that's like, boop, 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 boop. And it's like, it's <laughs> basically that, and then it goes somewhere else. But every single time... Oh, it goes to the like, Star Wars cantina. <laughs> <laughs> but the way the music works in this game is they there's a lot... There's like... Well, so I don't know... I actually don't know if the music is different by civilization. From so Civ I haven't Civ. really been able to figure it out. I don't think that it is. Um, because while I was playing as America, I had sort of, sort of, you know, kind of like pastoral kind yeah. of American stuff, but then also stuff that was clearly Asian influenced. Right. And, and then I played as another Civ, uh, I think Rome. And it was, it was, I, I yeah. de- there were definitely tracks that were repeated. Okay. And so I think it's lar- slightly large enough that I just haven't right. hit every. So I've just played the but, one as France. Okay. And, that's the only full game I've played, and so I don't really you have played a comparison as Muppet point. France, though. But like, yeah. yeah. But part of the way the soundtrack works is that you'll have essentially the same theme that will go through multiple ages, and they'll sort of add yes. instrumentation and like flourishes to it that are sort of, I guess, ostensibly period appropriate. Um, kind of. Kind of. Yeah. It's not. It's. It's not. So. But but there's but the, but because of that, it means you can hear the same like little motif. Yeah. For a long time, and when yeah. it's the fucking Muppet Show, it's. <laughs> like, it's I mean. Yeah. I don't know. It was weird. It was a weird experience. So I was sitting there, kind of, just you know, mindlessly playing Civ, um, probably dominating an uh, entire civilization. In probably five dominating. Turns. Probably, probably <laughs> just you know beefing up my guys and, and you know wrecking face. Probably and then, poning. Um, yeah, probably poning, and um, and then it, it dawned on me. Like what I was listening to was a tune that I recognized, and it was this sort of like, it, it, it like just superficially, it was kind of a, a very slow, uh, I think cello, um, uh, t- you know, kind of like solo, and it, it just seemed like ambient background music until I realized <laughs> it's the Muppet Show. It's team. the Muppet Show. <laughs> no, no, it was Scarborough Fair. It's a cover ah. of Scarborough Fair. And like then I was like, oh my god! Like I wonder if a lot of this stuff is actually. What if what you were listening to was the Muppet Show theme? Fuck! What if they licensed a bunch of stuff, including Scarborough Fair, the Muppet Show? I don't know the Muppet Show. Who knows? Like I, I I was I was baffled, but because I was in like 1820 at the time, maybe even earlier than that, Uh and I'm sitting there listening to this like Scarborough Fair cover. Which I thought was an interesting choice, but now that you say that, I'm I'm curious if there are any. That's a traditional folk tune, though. That's true. It is, I guess. Yeah. So, so there's not really necessarily yeah. it wouldn't really be a cover per se. Yeah, that's that's also true. Yeah, I guess I, I forgot that it was a traditional, traditional but thing. But I want to look up C yeah. Six Muppet Show. <laughs> I don't think about the art style. I don't think I guess, anyone but, else yeah. has made this connection. So I might be a, a crazy person. This podcast goes out and then whip pan to the Firaxis office where like someone has finally started to uncover our <laughs> lore. <laughs> Do you guys want to go from the most macro possible uh, to the most micro possible and talk about Sim Ant? Oh, yeah, Sim Ant. <laughs> yeah, sure. Speaking playing... of, like, early 90s yeah. Speaking of the uh, best PC music games in any game. from legendary oh, strategy man. game designers. God, that music. I don't remember I have. Sim I Ant haven't played music. Sim Ant in years. Well, you don't oh, remember man. the music, but you just brought it up as... Oh, I, just, I was just joking around. I was just goofing. Oh. Oh, oh, no. The second I loaded that game up, and I was I was playing with Janelle, who had no idea that Simant even existed. Right. And I just started playing this thing, and I just started whistling all the music, like literally every note wow. to the entire soundtrack. And I realized <laughs> I must have played Sim Ant for probably as much as I played like Civ Four or something. Right. But as a kid, so, not understanding. like. So for the people listening to this who also have no idea Sim Ant existed, yeah. what is Sim Ant? It existed. Uh, I mean, it was a game made by um, Maxis. Uh, by Maxis, yeah. Um, Which and, was Will, uh, Wright's, Will Wright's company. Yes. Yeah, and um, it you know it was sort of in that era of of uh, like post Sim City one where they were just branching out and doing things like Sim Life and Sim Town yeah, Sim and Earth. Sim Earth and well actually Sim Town was probably later than that but yeah but yeah Sim sort Tower. of like these very there, yeah, there was a while were, there where they were trying to do Sim. Anything and a lot of those games were were actually other developers that sort of yeah. were they were Sim weird Tower and like, Copter yeah, or Sim whatever. Tower, yeah. Oh God, Sim Copter was really good. Anyway, the streets of Sim City. Uh, that was not <laughs> not, not so Sim great. City. God, I was so excited when my grandma gave me the streets of Sim City. I, know, I think it was really I think bummed. We've, ta- we've talked about our streets Ugh. of Sim City letdowns before. I guess we did. Um, 
but yeah, so I, I played some Sim Ant, and I haven't played it in years. I played it on originally on the Super Nintendo, and so that's the version that oh, I played. Crazy. Okay, um, uh, I played it on the Macintosh. Yeah, too. which is yeah. it's you know, so funny. I didn't even it didn't even occur to me uh, until I booted it back up that there must have been a PC or or Mac version because it's just clearly well, like surely the original based. version. Yeah, yeah, but Sim Ant's real good with the mouse. <laughs> right. Yeah, but like as a kid, I just had no mm-hmm. like even the original Sim City I played first on. Super Nintendo or whatever, mm-hmm. so I just, you know, at the time it just didn't occur to me that these games were being made for PC first, but anyway, Simant's really good, uh, and it's 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 a really strange game. I was trying to explain it to Janelle. I was like, she's like, well, what do you do? I was like, well, you start as an ant and you... You uh, have to, like, infest a house, right? Well, that's your ultimate That's goal. late game. That's late game. Uh, what I didn't remember is that this game is actually a full, like, massive simulation in some ways, where you're just, like... As a kid, I was like, oh, you you dig some tunnels and make your little thing, and then you go kill the red ants, and that's kind of the game. And then you go, uh, you leave your console and go outside and play in, in the in the dirt. Uh, but, like, now I realize there's this overworld map where that's, like, grid-based, where that sort of, like, play area is just one of those grid spaces. And then there's a house, and you see, like, a guy mowing his lawn, and a doghouse, and like like all of these grids are actual just like places that you're supposed to go and conquer, and they each have um, like population counters for black ants and red ants, and it's this enormous like world war I can't that's you didn't going on. This uh, I know I probably should have, but yeah, it's a crazy game. I mean, you you play as a, a single ant, but then um, kind of turn into I guess the like leader of your ant people. And so you, <laughs> I mean, the it's it's weird. Ant? No, you well, yeah, I guess you do. You start as the queen, <coughs> you morph into the queen inside ah. your your sort of subterranean tunnel system, which is sort of this like cutaway. It looks like an ant farm, you know. And you can dig dig tunnels and sort of create little spaces. And then um, you, you you go down there for the first time, and then you hit a button and you morph into the the queen. And then at that point, the queen births you, which is this yellow ant. And now you're playing as this yellow ant that just like a worker. You're ant? just kind of a worker. Uh, well, you can choose to be uh, a worker, um, a soldier, or a harvester. I think, uh. Uh, and so you can actually, which are the you know different um, uh, variants of the other ants that. So the, the the whole game is kind of about like managing those the like caste system of the ant structure and right. like you can choose like how many workers you should be birthing right now. And there's mm-hmm. like you know a triangle graph where you can kind of place a. A point and say like, well, I really want to focus on soldiers right now. And then when you're out exploring the world, which is this top-down view of uh, of, of the yard, of, right? Of, the, of like, yeah, of a section of the yard, um, you can uh, because ants the way that you know, it's so stupid. I was reminded that I played this game as a kid in 1992, and then like I had to do uh, a report on animals or something in like first grade, and I just wrote about ants, but all of my information was sourced from Sim Ant. Uh, and I got away with it. Like they, they were oh, like, that's a classic. Very thing. good. Like A plus, good report. Yeah. And it was just like, well, the ants. You you click on the button to like <laughs> move your ants and stuff. Anyway, um, on first an ant morphs yeah. into a queen. Yeah, right. Then it births another ant, I'm, which I'm chooses sure which sort was, of ant to become. I was literally just doing a let's play in a in a stupid book <laughs> right. report form. I love, by um, the way, that there was a time in the world when a major publisher could publish a game from a major developer. In which you play as an ant, yeah. and like manage an incredibly complex ant colony, yeah, and that was just sold on store shelves for like a full for full price as a just, oh, so that was a sixty multi, maybe seventy dollar SNES yeah, a game. A lot of those games yeah. were like, like more expensive than sixty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, multi platform game bought by I mean kids. My, and my favorite version of that is that I remember pre ordering like Aero Biz, which is just like. <laughs> You couldn't sell that game for sixty bucks to a console kid now. Like, there's no way you could sell Aerobiz for sixty. I think I no, Aerobiz was like seventy or eighty. It may have been eighty dollars. Uh, yeah, what a weird time. Anyway, mm-hmm. so, man, it's really good. Yeah. Um, you kill other. You like fight yeah, other ant colonies. Yeah, right? you, you fight. You, you fight against the red ants. Yeah, you have your. You know, when did you get you, to the did top, did you just down, like you... totally subjugate Ant Gilgamesh? <laughs> No, I mean, I completely just got owned. I mean, I, uh. the, the thing is, like, the second you're birthed, it's it's like simulating what insect colonies are. You just have to immediately focus on just making as many ants as possible. Mm. Like, if you are falling behind 
in the population counter, like you're just fucked forever. Yeah, you're a stupid ant if you're just like, I'm going to explore my world. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> no. I was just like, oh, I'm going to walk around. Make 4,000 ants and yeah. then go explore. It started yeah. raining, and so I was like, oh, I guess I'll just sort of go down into my lair and then I, I, was, I was just kind of hanging out for a while. And then when I went up, there were like a thousand red ants. Like, they clearly <laughs> didn't give a shit about that rain. And I was just fucked. And then, like, the lawnmower came. And uh, I, I, like, heard it coming. And I was like, oh, I, I kind of forget what that sound is. I don't know. I wonder if I should. <laughs> like, <laughs> you, you've been killed by the lawnmower. Respawn. And now I was, like, super behind. And I was just, the whole simulation was completely d- fucked. But... Uh, it was weird to play an SNES game where that could even be the case. Where like now I'm just playing in this weird sim, and I'm screwed. But the game doesn't say like game over, kid. Try again. It's just like no, I'm just still playing this weird sim. I don't know. It was, yeah, it was a weird time where a kid could play a game like that and not really fully understand it. Like I had, I there were things that I clearly didn't understand right. as a kid sure. that I was exploring and realizing like, oh shit, this is how you like min max this game. But, but as like, a kid, you beat it. Uh yeah, sure I did. <laughs> oh, you did. You never. We talked. We've talked about this before. We in fact have used the end of Sim Ant as episode art one time. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the yeah, googly eyed did, guy scared it. out of his home. Yeah, yeah. googly eyed dog. Oh yeah, yeah. Anyway, Sim Ant's. So really is that good. game available? How, like, no, I was playing it on the SNES. I don't. I don't know. Maybe it oh, is. Oh wait. You oh so you were actually like literally playing the console version of the game. Yeah, I wonder. Oh, I so wonder you wouldn't have been able is. to stream it. I guess you you could have like pointed a camera at your screen but that would have I mean theoretically been weird. I, could, I could just grab an emulator or something but sure like, yeah I don't know if it is available um looks like it's sort of available right uh, but sure abandoned wear style but yeah. not not officially which is a shame because it's it's really good but uh yeah hmm. anyway was, well you want to take a break maybe we should there's right. one copy of sim ant for PC Mac available on Amazon.com for eighteen dollars and ninety eight cents. Oh, that's not bad. So there's no. a third party seller selling a boxed Sim Ant. Apparently, <laughs> it's not eligible for Prime, so I'm gonna pass. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. I fucking bought it. Um, <laughs> did you really? Yeah. Sorry, Idle <laughs> oh, Thumbs did? listeners. Yeah. Oh man. Sorry, oh, one Idle Thumbs listener who would have gotten that otherwise. Yeah. Video game. This episode of Idle Thumbs is brought to you by Nature Box. NatureBox sends you all kinds of delicious and highly varied snacks directly to your home or office. If you go to naturebox.com slash thumbs, you can get the first two snacks free. You can get two snacks free. Eat them. You eat them. You go to naturebox.com slash thumbs. You get two delicious snacks for free. Jake, I Chris. know that you will appreciate what I can only assume is a limited time uh, snack, pumpkin spice yogurt almonds. Why do I appreciate that? I know that have, being born on Halloween imbues you with the 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 spirit and appreciation of pumpkin spice in all things. I know that you are f- the foremost uh, <laughs> aficionado of p- pumpkin spice. That's true. I mean, when you put it th- when you put it that way, that's true. So I it's limited time. Get on that naturebox.com slash thumbs. Two snacks free. One of those snacks could be limited time pumpkin spice yogurt almond. That actually sounds pretty good. I, I'm I'm not really a pumpkin spice kind of guy yeah, generally, you are. Chris. He, but he loves it. <laughs> I do. I want those almonds though. Yeah, Re- like really bad. Also, up in the uh, fan fave section, I couldn't help but notice uh, second item in fan faves: Big Island pineapple. That is that is the true. Confirmed. That's the official Nature Box snack of this podcast. Yeah, that is confirmed fave. I love those things. I could eat an entire thing of Big Big Island pineapple without stopping, and probably have. Um, but they have a whole thing of them. A whole thing of yeah, it's just a thing of them, you know. Um, but they have like they have tons of stuff. They have other dried fruits, but they also have all kinds of crunchy snacks and pretzels and uh, like peas and like cluster like sort of granola bar cluster things. Um, you know, almond bites, coconut squares, tons of popcorns. They got up up on up there. Um, it's really all the it's every category of snack you could hope for really and if you go to naturebox.com slash thumbs you will get two snacks free yum thanks naturebox video game this episode of idle thumbs is also brought to you by movement movement sells a whole range of very stylish and well designed watches 
Uh, if you go to mvmtwatches.com slash thumbs, you can get 15% off with free shipping and free returns. And, Jake, you have been wearing one of these watches for, for I a have. while. I have. I've been wearing I've, one for, for about a month. Uh, you are a noted watch, wear, watch uh, yeah. wearer. I, yes. Noted by me, anyway. I don't know if noted by people listening to this podcast. I wore a watch for you know, from high school through college. Uh, and then I eventually stopped because I got a cell phone and I actually decided to start wearing a wristwatch again to make me look at my cell phone less <laughs> because I would have the compulsion of bringing up my iPhone to check the time and, and then, then immediately continue. press, press the button. And then I'm looking at Twitter and I'm checking emails right. and whatever else. So, um, I've tried to make myself just to learn the information I need by wearing a watch. And also it's a nice style accessory, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, the selection, uh, movement is actually really high. It's a lot of, it's, modern styles for men and women but i suspect that if you're looking for a watch and you're looking for one uh at a at a a pretty affordable price but like if you want an affordably priced watch that actually looks really modern and stylish and is made out of nice materials and is not cheesy i was i was very pleased by their selection i found a watch that i liked quite a lot on yeah these watches these watches start at 95 dollars, which is um a pretty pretty reasonable entry point uh for getting a nice watch yeah it it doesn't do look really nice yours looks really nice you have a very like understated watch but they also have uh you can go like you can go brighter crazier. gold watches and stuff like yeah. that as well i have a couple of nice details i've got like a nice powder blue second hand on my watch um, if you go to mvmtwatches.com slash thumbs you can get 15 percent off your watch and be like jake i still look at my phone all the time but you know <laughs> it's getting better but i got this really really nice watch that i like uh so that's good thanks movement video game Switch. Jake, what did you make of the Switch? As a resident Nintendo... <laughs> right, let's uh, go to our resident Nintendo correspondent, uh, yeah. Jake Rodkin. He's here <laughs> on the streets. Sorry, my brain is still on uh, watches after that ad, so all I'm thinking about is Swatch now, which is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo Swatch. That's the, uh, Give them another, another the cycle Nintendo or two. Game and Swatch. <laughs> <laughs> that partnership probably was discussed in the late 80s. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the Nintendo Switch. Everyone probably knows what the Nintendo Switch is now. Do we want to give an overview at all of what the Nintendo Switch is? Uh, Nintendo has announced a new console previously known as the NX. Uh, but this time, instead of calling it something completely stupid, they only called it something that people like tittered about a little bit on the internet. <laughs> um, it's now the, the Nintendo Switch. It's like... Uh, in the most simple case, it's basically a tablet... like. It's like the Wii, the Wii U controller, except you can dock it at your TV and then it plays to the TV, or you can just pick it up and it's a portable console. Uh, and also the controllers come off the side for some reason because Nintendo <laughs> is Nintendo. Yeah. And f- uh, I don't know. They they put out a video that just that showed just that basic functionality of a person playing on the couch like one does with holding a regular ass video game controller playing a Nintendo game on their couch and then they walked out of the room and before they did that they picked the tablet up and continued to play it actually felt very much like Nintendo was inspired by the original iPod commercial if you remember that of like a I dude don't. it was just a dude at his laptop listening mm-hmm. to music in iTunes and then like right before he gets up and grabs his coat and leaves he like drags his he was listening to the propeller heads and he drags that album onto his phone or onto his iPad onto his iPod, onto his, <laughs> onto, onto, like, copies it to an iPod, plugs in, unplugs the headphones from the laptop, plugs them into the iPod, and then, like, the music in full fidelity blasts as he, like, does a cheesy dance out of his house. Uh, and it seems like Nintendo is, like, they literally just took that video, or took that concept and put it in this video, and then put, like, 15 less plausible life scenarios on there as well where like you're playing basketball you're playing, you're playing a then, basketball game but and then, like, <laughs> well fuck that put your two uh, Nintendo Switches back to back and pull the controllers off of them then four people are playing 2v2 heads up basketball with the basketball court behind them uh, or whatever um, that that stuff I did not care about that stuff is the stuff that feels like the stuff that's in every Nintendo video in the you're post- not going to go to like a hip Brooklyn rooftop party and take your switch no along? that that element of it that like the like lifestyle footage stuff di- did not get me but the Nintendo is making one like the implication here at least seems to be that Nintendo is going to center on one canonical game console where they put their game development in because the uh, television console and the portable console are the same hardware like that's really appealing to me just because I'll get more Nintendo games into one device, I hope. Mm-hmm. Um, also, 
even though the fidelity I'm sure is going to be lower than Xbox One and PS4, the idea of uh, being able to just take that with me, especially on an airplane, is actually appealing to me. I'm a person who plays cell phone games on an airplane, but I would much more happily play a Zelda video game on an airplane. Sure. Um, the I, um, I don't know. It just it seems like it's just the core of it, the fact that Nintendo is showing a person playing, holding a two-stick controller, looking at a television, and then picking it up in their hands, and this, those same controls are mirrored on the handheld system, and that is the core experience that they're selling, just makes me generally happy, because the last time that they had a system like that was the GameCube, uh, which I also liked quite a lot. I like that I like that the base of Nintendo system this time around seems to be very normal and then they're also like well you can also do weird shit with it if you want but they're not their default position is not adapt your life to our weird idea and then you can experience uh, the tr- uh, the new mario well i guess yeah i mean i guess the distinction is that the wacky stuff they're doing is not um doesn't intrude on the game design right which is which is really different to the Wii or the Wii yes. U where the wacky hardware stuff is intrinsic to mm-hmm. the actual play experience, whereas in this case, the wacky stuff is sort of just letting you play the a normal thing in different places. Which it actually feels like what they were trying to get at with the with the, all the marketing for the GameCube, and it never happened. We're like, this system oh, has like, a, handle. a handle. <laughs> it was all like oh, all yeah. the stuff early on in GameCube, but that was like weird. I hadn't thought about that until now. That's like that was like the proto mm-hmm. Wii universe, like quote unquote lifestyle footage, where Nintendo would like show a kid yoinking that GameCube by the handle and putting it in a backpack, and then somehow you're able to play it at your friend's house even though you didn't also pull the AV cables out <laughs> of the back of your parents' TV. Like, yeah. All of your friends just have GameCube power leads and uh, the Nintendo AV. <laughs> but not a GameCube. But not a GameCube. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one rich kid just bought a bunch of replacement parts from the Nintendo 800 <laughs> number to put them at all his friends' houses. Whereas, I mean, the I doubt people will actually do that with the Switch, but it feels weirdly like it's actually technically possible now. Yeah. Yeah, I... I I was excited about that stuff, and now I don't know if I am as much because I just realistically don't know if I'm going to take that thing with me. It's still pretty big. Like, it's still a pretty big thing to take around. Um, And I already, like, the iPad already kind of didn't end up being a part of my life in the way that I thought maybe it would. Like, I just... Mm -hmm. I've just I'm just never in a situation where I'm taking something of that size around and that I could be totally anomalous in that regard. You probably aren't. But the thing that seems the nicest about the switch compared to many of the other systems is that if you don't do that, who fucking cares? I know it's just a Nintendo system. It's just a simple Nintendo. Right. I know. It's just that like and this isn't necessarily that a bad thing either. But like in order to achieve that, presumably uh, the result is that the system is going to have going to be a lot less powerful because they have to squeeze all of the guts into a really tiny case, yeah. Yeah. Um, which, you know, it's not the end of the world. But one thing that occurred to me, uh, I mean, it, when I say it's not the end of the world, like it's all like at this point, how much better. I, I know people have been saying this ever since the original Wii, but like, you know, especially for the kinds of experiences Nintendo is interested in recently. And like, you know, let's be honest, like that's the real reason people are going to buy this yes. system. Um, they are really, really good at making stuff look really, really good. E- even on, on whatever, uh, their, hardware whatever their hardware is. Yeah. yeah. Um, but be, be spending a couple weeks in Japan um, was interesting right before seeing this because uh, all the subway stations in Japan um, have signs that say, like, you know, be careful, don't have your head just down in a phone or a mobile gaming system, mm-hmm. like which is just not something you'd see in this country. Like you'll see stuff like that about phones, mm-hmm. but oh, like it's every muni not... bus says, like keep your head up and your eye and your phone down right, when exactly, riding the yeah. bus. Like, right, it... but it, in, in Japan, I guess mobile, ga- like mobile, dedicated mobile device gaming is still presumably enough of a uh, ubiquitous enough of a thing that that's actually considered like sort of on equal footing in, in a PSA scenario. Right. To, to be mentioned, so it occurred to me, I wonder if that that must be a big part of what's feeding the internal kind of motivation for this thing, it's, is that in it, the country of its origin, like, that's probably a much bigger chunk of, of usage. That is, that is surely true, but also, or I guess, and also, the, the Nintendo Switch marketing video was clearly aimed at people around our age to people who are in their late teens but i think the other market that they're they've got to be going after with this is parents who buy their kid an ipad 
to yeah. take in a car. Mm, Whereas this is like, yeah. you just, what, yeah. fuck it. You can just have Pokemon and Mario Party yeah, in your that's car. True. That's a good point. Um, and that, it seemed like the Wii U was kind of trying to get into that a little bit where you could transfer the game into the tablet and then your parents could watch TV and you could keep your game running. Mm-hmm. But you can't... It's sort of a compromise. But you can't walk that. that out of the yeah. living room, yeah. as I as I know from when I tried to play Mario Maker in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Mario Maker in the bedroom, man. <laughs> but, uh, on, on the... <laughs> Mario Maker in the bedroom with the Nintendo Switch. It's me, <laughs> Mario, says your son. <laughs> what? <laughs> he made Mario. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> what? Jesus. I, I, I'm that very confused was now. was taken to too strange yeah, a place. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I don't know. The, the Also, all that has been revealed from the, from the Switch is that, like, three-minute video, that just the yeah. trailer. I guess they also said that it uses... An arm. It uses, I think, did they say that? I think they oh, did. did. they not say that? I, I don't actually know if they said what the CPU is. I, I'm assuming it's, I mean, I, they said it's, it's, an, said NVIDIA, it's an NVIDIA, it's an NVIDIA power, NVIDIA power NVIDIA. thing. And so mind. I think it's, sorry, it's more sorry, like a, it's I like an NVIDIA wrong. shield kind of. Right? That's I my, mean, I was thinking yeah. of Apple, like adding arm support to right, right. Mac OS or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It has a Tegra, I think is. is yeah. I think that it, it kind it, of is just. A, it seems like maybe it's just a shield. It's just a shield, I think. Is maybe kind of it's what just the a custom, a custom with, shield with, with, with wacky Nintendo controllers. Isn't on there the side. precedence for that? Didn't didn't a recent Nintendo wasn't a recent Nintendo system essentially just like an existing configuration of something that already... I remember that the GameCube I think had an ATI logo on the side of it. It did. Yeah, <laughs> I think actually the. Um, N64 also had an ATI inside of it. At the end yeah, of but the it day. didn't have. It wasn't like a PC where it's got a little no, sticker. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I totally don't mind the uh, the, the the Nintendo Switch. I mean, like the video showed Skyrim and it showed yeah licensed sports games and whatever. But I don't actually care about any of those things at this point. What I, what I am happy about is that Nintendo seems to be making a deliberately sort of small and clean console that just plays Nintendo games, uh, but without it also trying to claim that it's going to fucking flip your life on its head. Although, the little controllers, the the fact that the that the uh, tablet has the controllers that can slide out, mm-hmm. I, I hadn't thought about it at first because I was distracted by their marketing, just showing people turn them on their sides and make little NES controllers. Yeah. The... The um the port the way they'll slide back in that has got to be a licensed a mm. licensable thing so that you could just so if anyone wants to make utter wee garbage oh, you yeah. totally could I'm sure <laughs> yeah, where bet. you like slide those buttons and that D pad out slide in a saxophone like <laughs> who the fuck who the fuck cares like you know get those like eighties ch- like chest compressing spring fitness things that you whatever the fucking thing is called. <laughs> Slide in your slide in your left and right reins, and uh, hook it up to your Nintendo horse and bag. It, right, yeah. Mm. We've all still got horse bags around, right? From the Wii, remember those? Collecting I dust. I mean, it's a collecting <laughs> dust in my <laughs> yeah, closet. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but you'll inflate it back up again for right. the new horse game. Right. That new Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm looking at an article about the Nvidia hardware that is in the in the shield, and it. I mean, I guess it's like pretty powerful. In the powerful. shield. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which is, well, I mean, the speculation is that yeah, the, yeah. the hardware is going to be very similar be, yeah. to that. And I mean, apparently, it's like it's pretty pretty beefy. I mean, uh, I'm sure it's not. I'm sure it's not going to be on the scale of current. Yeah. Well, I think the question is like, what's the resolution of the screen that they're trying to like push to, right, and then right, also right. like, what's the battery life? Well, that, right? those. Yeah. That's the the sort of true test of this stuff is going to be how well can anyone other than Nintendo make their games look and play perfectly yeah. when you're in tablet mode and you're right. not you don't have the benefit of a f- a of, a pa- of a power supply yeah. and yeah. of a you know super crisp television when you're instead running it like some probably diminished res off of a tablet mm-hmm. off an iPad battery yeah but I don't know yeah. don't yeah. know if I care because I don't know I might just want it so I can play Zelda on the TV and then go play it in bed and then fall asleep. <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone. I'm sorry. That's what I want. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's fine. That's what a kid wants, too. It is. So it's fine <laughs> for different reasons, but, you know. For the same reason. Well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> they love Zelda. Well, yeah, that's true. Uh, also, looking forward to rebuying all my virtual console games. Looking forward to... Oh, yeah. You know, some new friend codes, probably. <laughs> oh, God. What if there's not friend codes? Oh, 
I would be. There probably won't be, right? At this point, Mm. there's no way they would still be doing friend codes. (laughs) God, save that clip. Put a marker on that. (laughs) Yeah. On that. (laughs) Jake actually just put a marker on it in the audio file. Um, Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I you've you've talked me back into to 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 being. It just seems it just seems very simple. That's what I like about it. No, yeah, I agree. I agree with that. But mm-hmm. it's also it's it's. Um, I I think the reason I had come down a bit is because the like in the, the just like obsessive insistence in that marketing video of like what you're going to be doing with this thing rang so false to me that I was just like what the no one's going to do all this shit. But then of course like as you were saying it doesn't actually matter. You don't have to. Right. That's fine. That's the 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 difference with with the switch compared to the Wii and even the Wii U is that those games felt like, or those systems felt like they were saying I and what I do are essential. And the the Switch is like, that's eh, just kind of do what you want with it, including just leave it plugged into your TV and play video games. Yeah, and yeah. like, that that attitude feels so refreshing to me after the decade of, of mania. Yeah. 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 That's totally fair. Of Mario Mania. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I think it probably would have been a slightly more effective uh um ad if uh if there had just been more software in the thing that you could get excited about. Like the Mario there's game. There's just no game announcements in the thing, yeah, really. I, I think if you had seen like well, Chris in your example, well, if, if, they they, had... if you'd seen Pikmin running on multiplayer and those kids had just been like at a party playing Pikmin, I think you would have been, like, been oh, playing, fuck, what this if, is essential. What like, if they'd been playing sense. literally Pikmin two versus <laughs> Yeah, oh that's what God. I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like a multiplayer <laughs> Pikmin uh yeah would have well, sold you in a in a heartbeat. But a, in, on the other in, hand, in a, a bad a Pokemon slash good game. world where the Nintendo Switch has a good heads up Pikmin multi, uh, and then Chris and I could just have those at our desks. That's yeah. an interesting. Oh, that's an interesting world that I saying. actually like. But I think the 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 thing that most people would would have gone apeshit for is like a Pokemon game, right? And there's they, there wasn't anything like that in the thing. That's on so. people. That's they a they phone have, game if now. They have a head-to-head, well. If they have a head to head Pikmin on that, a lot of people are also speculating that because of what the Shield has out of the box, this thing will have streaming capability and uh, which you know we don't we don't know we don't know that yet but like totally plausible wouldn't be surprising really the ability to stream a like modern head to head pikmin game on its native hardware would be so awesome on the nintendo sorry. streaming network <laughs> oh, God, how, how sad oh sorry you, you thought you thought that was going to be on twitch uh, <laughs> yeah here's your code to tune into this channel <laughs> yeah, right. uh, everyone please follow us at uh, right. NSN.net slash 3865QZ. <laughs> I don't know why they started adding letters into it now. Oh, there are letters. There are. It's alphabet. Oh, there are really? It's, it's yeah. letters and numbers, yeah. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. You want to do some... Uh, <laughs> I don't think anyone noticed, but a couple episodes ago when you... We, we, we made a joke about... Uh, I don't th- about the Nintendo podcast platform being the thing you discovered in Japan. Oh yeah, and I listed a fake podcast episode number two episodes ago, and it's actually just someone's Mario Maker level. So if anyone goes back to the podcast description <laughs> Wait, a couple really? a couple weeks ago, oh, man, weird. Uh, yeah, play that in Mario Maker. Do you know? Did you pick a good one? Uh, or did you just r- literally randomly choose? Like, no, it's um, man, a person whose name I. Cannot I don't know how to pronounce his last name. It's Brendan uh, with K E O. Oh yeah, I don't, I don't know. know how to pronounce Kiana. his last name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he Kiana. still posts a bunch of Mario Maker <laughs> levels to Twitter, and I just picked his last one and put it in. <laughs> That's funny. Yes, I'm sorry that I don't know how to pronounce that. your name. I don't know. No one, no one mentioned it unless it's in the e- email. Yeah. Uh, or that level has been delisted because Nintendo seems to just pretty quickly delist Mario Maker levels if they don't uh, get mm. love. Mm-hmm. As I learned. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, you want to do some reader mail? I do. Let's do some reader mail that is that is most appropriate to what we just discussed. Uh, Eric uh, Pilblad writes, Hey, Thumbs. Last podcast you talked about the Tokyo Disney Parks, and it made me think about the recent Nintendo theme park deal made this year with Universal. While I've never been to Japan, I have been to Universal Studios in Florida and Islands of Adventure. This question is for Jake, mostly, but what type of Nintendo theme park would make you the happiest? <laughs> oh my God. Uh, it's not opening for a long while, 2020 in Japan, I think. But I really just want a Luigi's Haunted Mansion, Luigi's Mansion Haunted Mansion ride at some point. Eric from Iowa. 
I've never thought about wanting a Nintendo theme park. But now that you know it's going to happen for for sure. I don't think it's going to be good. I don't see a I don't see a world where this is good. Yeah. It seems like either the attractions are video game based in which case that is kind of off-putting to me. Why is that off-putting? Cuz there's Oh, you mean like simulate like Yeah, based? like oh, just, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want I don't want screen based rides based on a Nintendo game, but alternatively if it's gonna be like also yeah, the physical version of that though is that's also, also weird. Like yeah. what do you what yeah. do you want like a dark ride where they like you go into a pipe and then like a little <laughs> like Goomba on a rope like or on like a little pole goes boop boop and like gets near you and then goes away. <laughs> I just don't see. I mean, there's there's probably some weird cutting edge mix of whatever, but like Nintendo's games just like there's gonna just be a fucking Mario Kart. Ride a car around. Yeah, you know? there's gonna be like a Hyrule like village of some kind, yeah, and like that's. I don't know. That seems fine. I Zelda did. stuff would be really appealing to me. Somehow, a Metroid thing would yeah, be probably Metroid appealing probably if it was good. good but thing. I don't know. I don't know how you what the ride attraction. You would could be make a, tra- a cool Metroid Prime style thing like the um, Toy Story uh, Midway Mania. <laughs> <laughs> no man. You yeah, know, where I guess it's that's like true. Mixing a physical thing that you like. This is a ride where you go, you like go on a lock little, your arm in this blaster. Yeah, and, uh, well, yeah. yeah. So like the way this ride works is you're in a little cart Break that your like arm. goes through <laughs> a, a heavily <laughs> themed area that looks like Toy Story, and then there's just screens everywhere. There's just like huge LCD screens, just like on all, all every wall. And you have 3D and glasses can, on. And you have 3D glasses on, and you can like shoot this like little physical little sort of ball launcher. Yeah. But what happens then is your ball is like represented in 3D on the screen. So it's as though you're like shooting this 3D ball through the screen. That stuff. F- and it feels really, I think it feels really good. Oh, I love I the, I love the Toy Story ride. It's great. It, yeah. The physicality of it is incredibly strong. Like it feels like you are actually in a, a series of completely Im- like impossible to exist in real life carnival games. The reason that this stuff is not appealing to me when it's based on a game is that I could have a way better version of that Samus. <laughs> in the actual game. I could just play Metroid yeah, yeah, Prime yeah, yeah. No, and then true, like you true. are actually in yeah. the space and you are actually doing the shooting. So yeah, like yeah. the appeal to me of a Nintendo theme park I think would be actually doing physical build outs but then I don't know what you do in them because Mario games, Metroid games, Zelda games, so much of the fun of them is is the exploration, mm-hmm. from at least the 3D yeah. ones especially. Yeah, I think you're right that Zelda is the one that lends itself best to this and that you could just walk around a really nicely built out Hyrule and that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I don't know what any of the rides would be. Um, I don't but really, I, I've, also, know. I've also never, Island. I've never been to a Universal. I was going to say that guy bringing so up Islands really of Adventure what is anything they do there is. Islands of Adventure is a, probably a good comp for this because the um, what is sort that? Of, oh, sorry, it's the it's Universal's second park down there. They have Universal Studios, which is based off of the Hollywood version, um, which is you know sort of themed around like it's a back lot in Hollywood. But Islands of Adventure is just there are five separate lands within this park that are all themed um, off of uh, brands. So like. Um, Jurassic Park is one of the islands, and mm. one of them is Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss Weird. Okay. is kind of bonkers. Like, it looks kind of bonkers. Like, it's, kind of, it's, it's the like kind of thing I can imagine them doing with a, with a Nintendo world where you walk in and just, like, they're just enormous, like, cr- you know, mushrooms c- coming out of the ground and just, like, goofy, and everything right. looks like you're walking through a Dr. Seuss thing. There's also, um, the, like, the Harry Potter land to Kakariko yeah. Village uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. analogy or something. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Mario Land. Uh, yeah, it was a game, so uh, I mean, you know there's going to be like a Mario Land, uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Meet and greet Mario. Just give me... That that exact, hopefully they have the exact like creepy Mario from the Nintendo Switch like Twitter image that went oh, man. <laughs> like, pulling back. Hopefully when you meet Mario you have to like, go into that room creepily peeking from behind the curtain <laughs> right. and you have to like... Don't talk to, to Mario. There. Mario doesn't talk to you. <laughs> Yeah, no. If, Mario, if, Mario he only looks. Mario doesn't intrude to talk to you. He just intrudes creepily <laughs> yeah. on your into your presence. If they just build a, you have to talk to God. Luigi. But Mario, Mario just stares at you creepily. <laughs> <laughs> He's oh just, man, he just is... watches. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's how he likes. How Mario likes it. Yeah. yeah, yeah if you yeah. look, if you look directly at Mario, he just Mario, takes one Nintendo step back Switch. farther into the shadows. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is maybe this is maybe this land is is the actual final destination for our our long. Our oft discussed Waluigi extravaganza. Mm. A Waluigi, Waluigi ride. Dark Waluigi ride. ride would be pretty. Yeah. Okay. That's, now, now see, we're getting now there. We're, because we're, you could, we're the Waluigi it. dark ride just could basically be a retheme of the Pinocchio dark ride, <laughs> but Waluigi is there. And then also, if you ever look up 
a giant Waluigi is there. This is a huge Waluigi. Yeah. Waluigi. Yeah. If if it was if it was done in a way that where those rides are done where they sort of snake around an interior, so you like there's a huge amount of track in a fairly small geographic area because it's all doubling back on itself and stuff. So that no matter where you are on the ride, when you look up, you always see this like massive looming Waluigi sort of just like disappearing into the black, like yeah. receding right. into the just if his, like if his eyes are just painted in such a way that he it always looks like he's watching your car as you snake yeah. through his weird maze. That also, yeah. hopefully there's a, a cloud with the, the camera turtle following you as well. Well, that's just <laughs> in, uh, in, yeah. in in Mario world. Yeah. Maybe we could get now, the a... The Waluigi Park, he's the one following you. The, the yeah, Waluigi yeah, yeah. ride is... is is uh, you're entirely in the domain of Waluigi. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You're actually just a little, like, you know, you're in a small, weird shoebox world that he's created. You know what would be a cool over. thing for one of these rides is if, as you went through it, the scale slowly gets more exaggerated. So by the end, you feel sm- like. You, well, no, what you want is so that, that you, you want start, that to happen instantly when you turn into like Super Mario, right? Like you want like a, a uh, like, yeah, a, a, like a rapid switch to yeah. now you're like on the enormous. Mario one. Oh, you, yeah, you yeah. want a Mario ride where the big the big trick somehow is that you get hit yeah. by an enemy and then suddenly everything scales up to be twice as big. Yeah, that'd be that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I was thinking just like to mess with you in the Waluigi ride. Right. If you just like every all the surroundings slowly get bigger and bigger and bigger just by room. Like so you don't really perceive it room by room. But then by the end. You're like Waluigi is just like you're in the palm of his hand at the end of the ride. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, we solved it. I want to go there now. Yeah. Um. Let's see. (laughs) What else do we have here? What if Nintendo inexplicably does just announce that it's Waluigi Land? (laughs) Hopefully, they have a Waluigi Land. They won't, but uh, but hopefully they they do. Uh, Jonathan Anderson writes: You frequently encourage your readers to tell their friends about Idle Thumbs. I've definitely gotten a few people to subscribe, but that's not how I tend to pick up a new gaming podcast. More than anything else, I find new gaming media through guest appearances or recommendations from an existing publication. I started listening to the Bombcast because of the frequent references to Giant Bomb in the early episodes of Idle Thumbs. Man, that is a that is a first. <laughs> that yeah. I even found Giant Bomb thanks to us. Um, you're I, welcome, Giant Bomb. What? Well, you're welcome. In turn, I found Idle Thumbs because they referenced you on Retronauts. I found Retronauts because one of the Loading Ready Run guys mentioned them on the LRR cast, my first podcast. And I found Loading Ready Run because their unskippable show did a crossover episode with zero punctuation. Gaming podcasts and and the people who host them are of distressingly variable quality, and it can be difficult to find anything close to the quality you consistently put out week after week. So if you want to grow your audience, I encourage you to grow your community, have more guests on your show, and appear on other podcasts yourself. If I hear you on a site I already like, I'm that much more likely to expect I might like your show too. I also just really like the idea that Idle Thumbs is part of a larger meta community of enthusiasts. Here's some more examples of things I only care about because of Idle Thumbs. Polygon, Dishonored, Far Cry 2, Spelunky, K Plays Dark Souls, Downwell, Jonathan Blow, and Jay Allard. <laughs> <laughs> that is a strong list. Yeah, keep up the good work. Jonathan. All of those people have appeared on Idle Thumbs. I guess this reader does not know that. No, none of those, I wish. I don't think any of those, <laughs> none of those things have. No, I mean those video games did. Um... Well, anyone on like big famous podcasts that wants to invite us onto your podcast, here's your chance. I'd be down. Yeah. Anyway, um, I don't. We don't. Uh, <laughs> are you listening, Ira? <laughs> like, are you? Are you out there? Yeah. Um. Let's see. We had famous podcaster Justin McElroy on this show one time, but I think he was really nervous. I wasn't on that episode. It was a weird episode. Either. The funniest bit on that episode was we did in the ad segments, we got way out into the weeds and it was fucking hilarious. But then the advertiser pulled out between us recording it and the episode going on. We had to cut it. <laughs> oh, no. we, <laughs> we had to cut minutes of uncut goofs. The, the uncut goofs oh, yeah. Were you were saying cut. that you said that you thought that was like the oh, most fun part of the whole episode. Yeah, it was really fun. And then we erased it. <laughs> <laughs> Should just release that as a as a no way. We're not getting archives. paid for that. Well, I mean, I now I've built it up. It's it not funny. It's not even yeah, good, okay, so I'm enough. not going to put All it right, out. Okay. Jacob Nilsson L writes, "Hey Chris, I think it was. Oh, I'm not going to say it was. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, who wrote? Who wrote in? Jacob Nilsson Air. Hmm. Hey Chris and cohorts, have you seen the one to one replica of San Francisco made in city skylines? It's really a testament to the, the simultaneous tenacity and distractibility of man. Cheers, Jacob. Um, I know Jake and I have both seen this because we've talked about it. Nick, have you seen this? No. This is bananas. Here's a here's an an image imagure." Gallery, imagery. Um, 
it is someone created San Francisco in City Skylines, as stated in that email, on a one to one level, but in a way more intense way than you probably think, because it is accurate down to the down to wow. every city block and the number of buildings on the block, as far as I can tell. Like even to the point where in a lot of cases, this person seems to have like matched specific buildings with either custom assets of San Francisco landmarks or just like the closest building you can make in city skylines to approximate the type of building and architecture of the real world building. And if you look at Google Maps, uh, like a Google Maps top down satellite view of San Francisco and compare it to this game, to this map, it's just the same. It's it's crazy. It's the most yeah. impressive, exhaustive version of this I've ever seen. As, as someone who lives in San Francisco, it's kind of eerie to see. Um, and this person doesn't live in San Francisco. He's he's French and has been to San Francisco one time oh, for a, for a conference, and he just loved the city. Um, and so has just like just extensively consulted hmm. Google Maps and photographic. Uh, evidence to recreate the city to just an insane level of detail and it sort of just cuts off towards the south of the city because he hit just like a hard limit in city mm. skylines like there's just like at a certain point it just cuts you off in in being able to build anymore presumably for sort of performance and memory reasons or, or what have you uh but it is it is shocking it's crazy yeah complete yeah. yeah it's very crazy so uh if you search for this on I, you know, I I don't really know how to how to. I bet link if you look it, for cities, skylines, San Francisco, yeah. it's in the it's in like the conversation. Yeah, you'll right find now. news articles about it and stuff because it's very impressive. Um, well, here let's just keep this other this other theme going. Aaron Littleton writes, "Hey, thumbs, I couldn't help but laugh when you were discussing how to promote a podcast in your latest episode. <laughs> I've been running a podcast for a while now, but recently started a new one with a friend." As we were closing out an episode a couple weeks ago and running through the Rate Us on iTunes speech, one of us made a joke about how we had no idea how to promote a podcast. My co-host sheepishly admitted while recording that he had recently Googled the very simplistic how to promote a podcast. It staggered me because I had that very week Googled the same thing. It just feels like something that people three months into a podcast should have nailed down before then. Yeah, you'd think that for people who are eight years into a podcast. (laughs) So, you know, don't feel too bad about yourself. Um, That said, I don't think either of us learned anything from our Googling, so I can't help you. My current plan involves getting an email read on a more popular show like Idle Thumbs. Thanks (laughs) and keep casting those pods, Aaron Littleton. Twist, you did not mention what your podcast is. (laughs) Uh, So we we can't confirm whether this is actually more popular than that podcast. (laughs) You've got to do this person solid now after reading their email and at least mention what their podcast is. No, I will. He puts it in a PS. It's videodeathloop.com. Okay. The podcast where two guys watch a short video clip on repeat until they break. Mm. Um, He says, PS, our email address is questions at videodeathloop.com and my co-host, also an Idle Thumbs fan, told me he's constantly worried he's going to accidentally say questions at idlethumbs.net instead. That's fine. If you do, please promote our podcast uh, by way of the incorrect email address because <laughs> that's get, that's how I learned about podcasts. He continues, if you get anything that looks like it's for us, please just forward it over. Fuck that. If we get anything that looks like that, I'm reading it as an email on this podcast. Um, and then you can listen to me say it and put it on your podcast. <laughs> Take Look that. out for number one. Promote a podcast. Out of thumbs. Out of thumbs. Dot net. Tell your friends. Write we, us on iTunes. Look out for the episode where we read that email uh, over and over and over again on loop <laughs> for sixty minutes until we break. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. Well, Joseph Morad writes this. Hey, dudes. This candy isn't hey. gross per se, but I can understand one's hesitancy to eat something called toxic waste. Short circuits. Huh? <laughs> what? There's a can't... I've never heard of this. Um, he has an image, and it just looks like a fucking, like, barrel of toxic waste. This might just be toxic waste. <laughs> <laughs> what? I... No, no. It's a candy, Chris. Oh, yeah. Here it is. Okay. The full image. Toxic waste, short circuits, shockingly sour bubble gum. Um, and then the image is of like mm. a nuclear mushroom cloud. Oh my god! Uh, amped apple, surgeon strawberry, blackout blueberry are just a few examples. Another treat from Professor Sour Noggin's secret library. Oh man! Toxicwastecandy.com. Oh, wow. Hold on, Sour Noggins. I, my Google image search for toxic waste short circuits included. An all red background with a huge stripe over it saying recall. 
<laughs> Toxic oh, no. waste short circuits bubble gum recall <laughs> lawsuit. Oh no! Oh, <laughs> Dynamics recalls toxic waste short circuits bubble gum imported from Pakistan due to potential for lead contamination. Oh my god! But anyway, toxic waste. Don't I don't eat wow. this. Wow. This is from 2011. So Who could have predicted that it. the candy called toxic waste would they end up f- it being itself be great toxic? For you. Yeah, they probably fixed it. That's five years ago. <laughs> I'm not going to take that risk. Probably no. for what it's worth. No. <clears throat> anyway, Nick ate that. Nick, Nick, <laughs> Nick just quietly picked up and started looking at <laughs> the sour like, baby I bottle. Know who pop. made it? I just, I don't it's been recalled. Professor it's okay. Sour Knock? Man, no! Oh man, uh, th- this re- I-, I might have already told this stupid story because it's very short. But um, when I uh, was in college in Santa Cruz, there was this old ass uh, convenience store market next to our house, and it was. F- Fascinating because the, none of the fixtures inside, none of the signage, uh, and uh, ha- had been updated in clearly like forty. Sorry, where was this? I missed a, a, the... a convenience store slash market okay. like near my house uh-huh. in Santa Cruz. The interior had clearly not been updated in like forty years. Like it looked mm-hmm. like, um, or maybe fifty. It looked like something from the sixties or seventies. Like it was. Uh, the guy who ran they, it did not have a functioning butcher shop anymore. But the guy who worked behind the counter always just wore like a pristine smock, like right. mm. like buttoned up. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing about it that was highly suspicious is that many of the things on the shelves also had not been restocked <laughs> right. in oh, years. So there was a classic convenience store thing. And, but like uh-huh. decades and decades, and oh, like wow. it was it was really cool. Like we as a bunch of just right. dorky dorky dork film students uh, to be able to go into basically a period set that was also a functioning this store. This just sounds like you yourselves were in a horror film, like a low budget horror. Yeah, film. but it was more that we like, were. Ex- oh, guys, have you seen this cool <laughs> convenience? They have stuff from like the seventies in there. They had stuff from all eras, though. Like they had <laughs> what? What was the name of those gross uh, plastic bottle soda things that you would like? Squ- that you'd squirt. That had like cartoon mascots on them from the eighties. I have no idea. You know what I'm talking about, right? I think so. Oh my god! Yeah. But they they had you know like canned corn that clearly were hit. they the ones with the bottle was we- the, it had like a twist off top that was yeah. really weird shaped. Yeah, the plastic yeah, twist off top. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember, remember that. what it's called. Yeah. Anyway, they had a shelf full of those that were just covered in dust. But I remember uh, my friend my friend Jason thought it would be a good idea to go in and actually finally buy something. So he went in and tried to buy some Pac Man vitamins. Uh-huh. Obviously, they have not sold Pac Man vitamins <laughs> in a long fucking time. Yeah. He took them up to the counter, brought out the cash, and the guy in the smock just. <laughs> he said, these have been recalled and put them behind the, behind the counter and wouldn't sell them to him. What? <laughs> that is a very interesting man that he simultaneously <laughs> is aware at a moment's notice without oh. needing to like look anything up that they've been recalled, has been aware of this presumably for a long time. <laughs> Continues to leave them on his shelves. Our assumption is for it, years. Our assumption is it was yeah, fully what? at that point that that store has got to just be a front for something. Like the whole back where there's supposed to be refrigerated <laughs> okay. stuff and like where yeah. you keep your like yeah. butcher shop shit. Yeah. There's just like a biker gang trafficking meth into Santa Cruz through there. Or right. Something. right. The guy but, wears a smock for a different reason. I mean, it, he's just like an old guy who seems like he's just been there forever. But yeah, they, these have been recalled. <laughs> it puts them behind the counter. And then, <laughs> <That's> amazing. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Wow. Oh. <laughs> So he tried to buy some toxic waste electric circuit explosion. Yeah. yeah. God, he should have just kept going one by one and bringing different yeah, yeah, ancient yeah. items up to I the think that experience was enough that he's like, I did it. I'm out. I know, but I, you know. Yeah. Oh, man. Very good. Yeah. Uh, Matthew, this is our last email probably. Matthew Dunick writes, hey, thumbs, quick three things. On Foucault's Pendulum, I'm finally reading Umberto Eco thanks to your recommendations. Did you know that Stanley Kubrick had been interested in doing an adaptation of Foucault's Pendulum? Unfortunately, a go-between, misunderstanding Echo's opinions of movies, glibly declined the inquiry. Echo learned of it much later and scrambled to fix the mix- miscommunication, but by then Kubrick had moved on. Oh, what could have been? Man, that is, a, that is bonkers to imagine. That would have been a crazy movie. Mm-hmm. Yep. Sorry, Jake, Just you just perked up a second squeeze ago. Squeeze It is the name of it. <laughs> squeeze, <laughs> squeeze It. It was it. totally Squeeze It. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, yeah. that guy had Squeeze It stocked in around 2001. Yeah. Jesus. Uh, but they were clearly like 1993 Squeeze It. Right. Anyway. Hmm. <laughs> um, so this is a three-part email. The second part, on crosswords. Like Chris, I enjoy crosswords, but I haven't enough time for them. If other Thumbs readers are in my situation, I recommend the New York Times Mini. It's a decent and free daily fix. It takes about 30 seconds to complete. 
Yeah, the mini's cool. I don't really do it because um, I already do the regular daily crossword, and then the, the mini just adds more time to that. But yeah, it is a fun little tiny. It's a tiny little crossword they release every day, and the New York Times crossword app for iOS also has that. Yes. If you're interested, so just that's a good way to do it. Uh, they have, I love that app. Uh, and then finally, on dying. Finally, I wanted to let you know that your idle conversation about casting pods ahead of time and then dying left me gobsmacked. I think about this all the time. I'm a cartoonist, and my current run through Thanksgiving is already in the can. The publisher bot could be posting episodes for several weeks after my death. What would that mean to everyone in my life? I'm not sure what to make of this admittedly indulgent daydream, but it was arresting to hear it from the outside and perhaps comforting to know that others venture these thoughts too. Best, Matt, crunch noisy on the forums. Cartoons at crunchnoisy.com. Um, yeah, I guess a cartoonist is someone who would probably be really, like, you know, yeah. prime position to do that because you're accustomed to, like, pumping out a ton of, like, little pieces of content, ahead, hopefully ahead of time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Podcast would be tougher, but we could we could do it. It wouldn't be that tough. We just gotta like. We bank. just have to triple. Yeah, we just have to. We have to record assuming, back to back. Assuming we're gonna live forever. for like you know several more decades, we could bank an extra episode like once every six months. We should we should actually just, record a podcast episode to release after we've all died. But then when they open up the the box, it's just an AU file of mm-hmm. "Hello, my future girlfriend." <laughs> 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 How do they, I've, I've, I'm milking hell of my future girlfriend so much yeah. this month, but it's it, it's, it always oh, it's keeps fine. getting it's you. Funny. Yeah, yeah, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> All right. God, I saw um, there's a, a project that that started in like, God, it's called like Project 2015 or something. I I don't know if that's what it, it sounds is. futuristic. Yeah. Oh, sorry, no, 21. It must be 2115. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Project 2000. <laughs> yeah. um, it's like, oh, God, I didn't. Nailing didn't, this. Yeah, I really, yeah. <laughs> um, it's like putting art in a, th- in in a, a box thing that people are going to open up in 100 years. Uh-huh. Um, so it's like a time capsule. Yeah, it's they, like a time capsule. Those. Oh, it's time but capsule. There's like, but there are like. Movies or oh no, it's a bu- there's a book. <laughs> Multimedia CD ROM. Listening to Idle God, Thumbs. Please, I, don't, I want the shrub guy to to please pull out that clip and make the make the idle shrub uh, speak that. It's <laughs> that like a, a movie. <laughs> that was bar time box. <laughs> <laughs> they put muse art in a <laughs> thing. <laughs> No, <laughs> fuck. Uh, it was uh, God. Who's who wrote The Handmaid's Tale? Um, or um, Oryx and Crake? Margaret Atwood. Yeah, Margaret, Margaret Atwood. Margaret yeah. Atwood wrote a book for some project, and the book isn't going to be released <laughs> until like twenty one fifteen or something. Oh yeah, I saw that. That's rude. Why is she keeping her work from her I loyal fans, from her paying customers? <laughs> but that is a project, right? Oh, twenty one fourteen. Yeah, maybe. it's yeah. Yeah, it's twenty one. Like a lot of a lot of authors are doing that. Really. No, I, mean, I think it's. I think it's not just her. I think it's. Yeah, multiple. no, it is a project. It's called Future yeah, yeah, Library. Yeah. That's yeah. here. I found it. Finally, Jesus. Um, okay, yeah, they're compiling a hundred texts mm-hmm. for publication in twenty. Can it be twenty one fifteen? So it could be an anno when we finally get to <laughs> <laughs> open up this. Um, God, I, I feel like Ben and I had another revelation about anno numbers recently, and I already forget what it was. Oh, besides them being. Uh, well, we already standards. knew they add up to nine, but oh yeah, besides them being standard resolutions, yeah, um, yeah. Well, it's that the next Anno game is going to include a previously unpublished Margaret Atwood <laughs> novel. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, then there's also that like Robert Rodriguez movie that had John Malkovich in it. That was an ad for like a cognac brand that also won't come out till twenty one fifteen or something. Are you guys not aware of this? <laughs> that seems essential. You mean like, is this like a demolition man thing where it's it like, in a, the future, it was an Taco campaign. Bell? It was an oh. ad campaign for a, for like Louis the, there's a, there's a, a, a cognac, like Remy cognac or something brand that's like, it, they, it takes them a hundred years to, oh. to make. Oh, so they're going to, it's a real thing. It's, it's a real just thing. An ad you're going to age a Robert Rodriguez movie? Yeah, Louis the Thirteenth. <laughs> Let's find a director whose movies absolutely do not age, and then <laughs> <laughs> do not age well at all. Yeah, I think do not age. You said the wrong thing. I think what you meant is do not age well. That's why I did mean that. <laughs> yeah, yes. they age. They do age. They age rapidly. <laughs> they but age. then, what if we leave it in a vault for a hundred years? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it was an ad campaign 
for this cognac. And the ad campaign was that, like, you'll never, the movie, the tagline is the movie you'll never see. Um, and so anyway, so there's multiple current artistic figures for various reasons, some more legitimate than others probably, making sh- shit that will only be released uh, when the final episode of Idle Thumbs is released after it concludes uh, its years-long um, In posthumous run. Yeah, it's twenty one fourteen. But I mean, at that point, only the robots will be listening. That's fine. <laughs> that's, that's that's they'll, they'll appreciate all of the uh, all of their the yeah, perspectives on that's them true. That, actually, yeah. yeah, that we are we are kind of you know marking their they'll history chuckle to them. them. So they'll robotically yeah. chuckle to themselves. Yeah. About robots their... will produce a movie about a robot who only was raised on old Idle Thumbs episodes. <laughs> but then they won't release it for a thousand years. But then they'll all get to still watch it because they're immortal. <laughs> they won't and even they will notice that the time all. changed. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. Well, thanks for listening to Idle Thumbs. Uh, while we're still with you, um, you can uh, send us email at questions at idlethumbs dot net. You can tell a friend. You can invite us on your more popular podcast to talk about this one. How about that? Consider that dismaying observation. <laughs> um, by the way, speaking of that, we're. <laughs> A couple, some of us are going to Disneyland this weekend to celebrate Jake's birthday, which is on Halloween. And the fucking Haunted Mansion ride has the Nightmare Before Christmas version on it. And I just want to like say how ridiculous it is that a ride that is a haunted house ride, it's a Haunted Mansion ride, it's the Halloweeniest fucking thing that a ride could be. It's ridiculous that you can't ride it because you have to ride the like movie overlay version, which is a movie about Christmas, by the way. It's a movie about Halloween celebrating Christmas. Yeah, it's, I still think it's bullshit. I actually don't mind that ride anymore. I don't mind it, but it's not. It's I no, actually you, think there are some good. There are parts sure. Of that ride. Would you claim it's better than the actual real haunted mansion? Well, no, but no, I mean, exactly, and it's fucking Halloween. Anyway, we're getting dangerously close to some sort of spin-off situation needing to happen before <laughs> we just ruin this podcast. All right, bye. Thanks for listening. Tell a friend if you if you think you should, especially if that friend runs a popular podcast. Tell us to be on your podcast. I mean, that person wrote in and was like, I want to feel like you guys are part of, you know, a sort of yeah, network. Exactly. We are. They, you know. We can give you, we can bring that to your all, all more of, popular, isolated all, podcast. All of our friends who run successful, giant podcasts know that we are a toxic presence. <laughs> We just we just mute we, because we bring toxic candy with us. Yes. We should be recalled. We, really, we should, like, <laughs> everyone knows that we've already been recalled. <laughs> we're 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 not we're not we shouldn't be. Idle thumbs it. is the Pac Man vitamins of podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks for listening. Bye. Don't touch Nick. No, oh, no. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't Stop. even think about touching that Nick Brecken painting, <laughs> says a municipal sign. <laughs> have you read Curtain? <laughs> that Nick Brecken could say, have you read oh, Curtain? Oh, it totally could. <laughs> Actually, that, Jay Allard is the one that would really be leaning in based on the pictures that people sent of mm, what that Poirot yeah. looks like. Yeah. Well, you just need to black out the background because he needs yeah. to be coming in from that three-quarter angle and sort of just giving it a sassy <laughs> right, look. Right, of that's like, true, yeah. yeah, yeah. My the final case. Sort of his, this, like the <laughs> angle of his body is sort of pointing towards the direction he's looking. Yes. Where all the descriptive text of the book is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but instead he's saying, have you read whatever that shitty book is? <laughs> right. What is Jay Allard's book? Oh, Cumularity. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Have you <laughs> read <laughs> Cumularity? <laughs> <laughs> all right. What is this, 280... 286, Chris. Idle Thumbs, 280,000.